All right. So you'll give me a countdown, okay? I'm going to fill up the water. You're allowed to come over here if you want. Just getting everything ready here, loading up the thing. You're getting comments, right? All right. <laughs> you better press done. What's up, guys? Welcome to live cooking with me, pasta New Yorkese. So this is a combination of an arrabbiata sauce, which means angry in Italian, and uh, <laughs> um, a combination of a matriciana, which has some pork fat in it, and a combination of penne alla vodka, which uses vodka to bring out the flavors, sort of like accelerating uh, flavor melding. That's what vodka does. So rather than call this a matriciana and have all the Italians yell at me, I've called it New Yorkese because that's what we do. We take something and we move with it. So that's the dish, okay? All right, so let's just go through what we need real quick. Uh, you need some olive oil, definitely need some salt, I use prosciutto in a packet for this because I end up baking it. This is like the only time I use pre-grated cheese because uh, we end up using a lot of it. it. makes it really creamy instead of putting cream like you would in a penne alla vodka. Uh, I am going to use Mezzi Rigatoni of the DiCecco variety. Um, for the money, this is a very good brand. They dry it out really well. It's got a coarse uh, extrusion process, so it really hangs onto the sauce well. And if you, it's widely available, so if you pick this, we should be cooking at the same time, right? Right. We need some garlic, and we need a can of tomatoes, some hot peppers, okay? We also need a sheet tray with either parchment, you can put a little drop of water in there and put the parchment, that'll glue the parchment to the paper, or a sill pad, which is like a reusable piece of parchment. So that's where we're at. We got ice cold water right here. Can you imagine if that was hot and I just like completely scalded my hand? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn this guy on, and we are gonna start we're gonna start cooking right now. First thing we're gonna do is turn on the oven, 350 bake. Okay, you you can hang that. It's all good. How does this work? I have no idea. <laughs> How do you just do bake? There it is, bake. All right, so I set that to 360 degrees for one reason and one reason only. I was hanging out with a skateboarder the other day and a 360 is a complete rotation. So that's why I've chosen that temperature. The truth is every oven is different, so it doesn't really matter what temperature you pick. You hear me? Cool. All right. So this is the slowest part of the entire process right now, is your garlic cloves. I would say 
We're cooking for four people because we're gonna do a pound of pasta. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six-ish cloves. So you can come in tight if you want. We're just gonna Okay, and we can kind of do this and the skin will come off. That's pretty dope. After the little smash, sometimes you gotta get a little bit more. There are all these like chef methods of getting the garlic skin off, but it really only works if you're doing, you know, 50 cloves at once. For something like this, you gotta just suck it up. So we're going with the garlic cloves here. And some of you may ask, why not just get pre-peeled pre garlic cloves? And I, I know that that's a thing. But to quote a great in the cooking world from my past, from all of our pasts, Marcella Hazan, if you don't have the time to peel fresh garlic, you don't deserve to use it. That is a direct quote. And she's right. I mean, if you get tight on that, look at how shiny it is. It's got so much oil on it. The pre-peeled stuff is dried out. All right. So if you've ever worked in a, you know how cooking gets like super messy right away? You gotta clean along the way. So, I'll do a little bit of that. Very nice. I got my towel back here. Very good. And let's start slicing this stuff up, okay? So come here. I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna flatten. I think the straight on angle is a cool one. Look. And then you don't block the light. Okay. So, here we go. Ready to flap it over. The knife is already sticky from the garlic. It's pretty wild stick into my top finger. If you want to do it this way, you can. That works. I'm into like the longer slices lately. How many people we got so far? We got 47, 48 people. By mm -hmm. the way, Jack Knight said he is currently eating a bowl of pasta New York case as you cook this while he watches. My man, Jack, my man. For double points, Jack, do you happen to be in the New York tri-state area? Because that, that's the alley-oop right there. I will uh, post the actual written recipe. I will post the written recipe for this, um, which I put on my Instagram, at Frankie Cooks. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm pleased. It's plenty of garlic. Check it out. Move in on it. All right. We're going to come right here. We're going to put a pan on like relatively high heat for the time being. And part of what makes this so delicious is that we use a lot of oil and we try not to brown the garlic at all. We try to confit the slices so that it almost melts like, a, like an anchovy. Um, but it's gonna be a fair amount of oil. So you're all familiar with the fact that I'm not like super into measurements, but I would say this is like at least half a cup. It's maybe, maybe a third of a cup. That is some hot oil already. Nothing's faster than induction, man. Okay, now we'll watch it if, you know, we wanna make sure it doesn't run away from us, so I'm like turning it down a little bit. We're good. I'm gonna come in with a pinch of salt here, flavoring it. You can hear the salt fizzle. And we will come in with a little bit of red pepper flakes so that that heat really cooks out of it. This is the Arabiata dish that we're borrowing from, right? Angry, spicy. Frank, a question from the crowd. Yep. If we don't have olive oil, what can we use as a substitute? 
Honestly, garlic cooked in butter, really, really low, is delicious. I wouldn't go with vegetable oil. I wouldn't go with coconut oil. Those are gonna cheapen the entire flavor. You'd rather go richer if you don't have olive oil. Um, so butter. And can we alternate uh, Parmigiano with any other cheese? Of course, you can absolutely use Parmigiano. I like to use the Pecorino here because it's a funkier cheese with a lot of salt in it, and it mimics what a Matriciana has. You know, just trying to anger the Italians. So real quick, here's our can of tomatoes. I'm a big fan of... I'm a, I'm a real big fan of crushing them by hand here. So you can do this, I'm doing it in a clear vessel here just so you can see. I'm gonna make you look huge. <laughs> well, you crush. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's nice and smooth. Came through the hands well. Beautiful. Okay, take a look at the garlic. So notice how we didn't let it run away from us, right? It is highly aromatic, and it is sizzling. It's like stuff needs to be happening, you know? Sip of water. It's so hot in here. Okay, so here's our vodka. Now, if you're on a, if you're on a gas stove here, you're gonna want to take this off the heat and do this, uh, because it will it will ignite. Worst case scenario, it ignites up the stream of vodka into the bottle and it explodes. It's pretty bad. So at this point, you kind of want to crank it back up again. Come look. As we pour the vodka. city. So what's happening is the oil was at, call it 330 degrees, and we just added a liquid. Alcohol doesn't boil at 212, but it's in the area of water. So what we did was we put it way past its boiling point because we put this vodka into oil that's 80, 90 degrees higher than where vodka would boil at. So it just like hyper boiled and splattered everywhere. So that's what happened there. Let's do the prosciutto. Hey, did my man answer me if he was in New York eating that pasta New York or what? He is in England. Oh, hell yeah. We also got a shout out Malaysia. It's 2.40 in the morning. All right. Thanks for checking in. I forget your name, I'm sorry. Malaysia was great. I've been there. It's a fantastic place. I love all those coconut curries. And sambal, of course. All right. Shout so out you... Aria. Oh, yeah, Aria, that's right. Aria is Malaysian. Okay, so you want to... um. You can see why this is like a little bit easier, right? You wanna keep the pieces whole. And I have never been a fan of cooking with prosciutto. I think it's like gross if you cut it up into little pieces and, and cook it and like destroy it. But this, this method right here, and if you get it right, which it's, it's really easy to get right, it's better than bacon. It's crispier, it's just fantastic. So, I'm into this. I've had several friends of mine say, Frankie, this is better than bacon. <clears throat> really, John did the other day. I just did this for a uh, private cooking gig. Cooked it for elderly people. All right, so we'll go with four pieces there. Turn this guy down a little bit. It seems like, here's how you go, you go. And you know, before it smelled like vodka, and now it doesn't. So the alcohol has cooked off. Back to that in a second. Going in the oven, okay? Okay. Chef bite. Cameraman bite? Really? Ha <laughs> ha.
Free bird. <laughs> Someone said that? Someone said free bird? That's your line. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're talking about the, uh, the alcohol in here. Why use vodka, right? It has nothing to do with getting drunk. It has to do with the fact that alcohol is a flavor melder accelerator. And so it's almost like if you make a sauce and then you try it the next day, you, you know how it like tastes better? This is what the vodka is doing for us. So I'm just putting a little bit of water to try to get, you know, the maximum amount of our tomato out of here. We got, we got a lot there. I'm gonna get a little more though. What can we use instead of vodka? Uh, white wine works. A really, really non-hoppy beer would work. And if you just don't do the alcohol thing at all, you can skip the step. Or you can make this sauce a day ahead, completely chill it down into the fridge, and you'll, you'll get the same effect of amazing flavor. It just needs time. Wondering if you would ever put MSG in a dish, in like, dish like this. I, um, a friend of mine, John, who, who I hire to cook with me privately, who I hire to cook with me privately sometimes, he, he takes MSG with him, and we, we put it on stuff. And MSG is a naturally occurring um, element, spice, salt, salt. Even though it's manufactured by people, uh, the Chinese food syndrome thing has been completely debunked. Uh, MSG is found naturally in Parmesan. So if you're asking if I would put Parmesan on this, yes. If I would put directly MSG into it, I wouldn't be opposed to trying it. Why not? Really. No problem at all. Okay, so we got our tomatoes in here. We want to bring this up to, we we'll bring this up to something. There we go. And you'll see that the oil and the sauce, they, they do separate from each other. That's part of the reason why it's so important that we use a lot of cheese, because that's, the cheese is what emulsifies. The cheese is what's gonna emulsify the tomato and the oil together. MSG is even found in tomatoes and seaweed. That is correct. And broccoli. broccoli. And steak. And steak. You know what? Let me definitively answer this. Yes, I would put MSG in this. This is pasta New Yorkese. It does not follow the rules of Italy. That's where I stand on this issue. Next question. Okay, so we're done with this. Frank, if you're gonna do a Trump impersonation, you're not allowed to answer the question. I know, that's a really good point. Oh, man. Hope you're all having a Father's Day that is happy for you fathers out there. Should we take a peek? So you can, you can see, it's starting to, you know, the fat is starting to, watch your hand, yeah, man, that's gonna be hot. Okay, I'm closing it. Okay. Because we're letting all the heat out. But this is happening quickly. So I think we're good to put the pasta in. I think it'll be done in time. So, we've got our sauce boiling. I just put the water to full blast, so we won't be waiting for that too much longer. Here we go. And I am a fan of diamond crystal salt, which is the least salty salt of all the salts. And that is what enables me to put about that much in the pasta water and not have it taste like the ocean. I've said, make it taste like the ocean because I think it's important for you to oversalt the water at one point in your life, I really do. But it should actually be one to 2% salinity and I believe the ocean is four to five. So how do you get 1%? Well, if you use the metric system and you wanna be like totally precise about it, for every liter of water, you'd put 10 to 20 grams of salt. And then the brand of salt you use doesn't matter because you'd be weighing it. But in the meantime, you don't have that. You just put the salt in, taste it. And it doesn't taste like the ocean, but it does have flavor and it's delicious. Could you please so, remind our viewers what the oven temp is? Yeah, the oven temp right now is 360. It doesn't really matter if you're 320 or 400. You just gotta keep an eye on it. It's gonna look like it's burning. Let it go like two more minutes. You're gonna see all this fat smoke come out everywhere. I'm at 360. All right, here we go. We're going in with the pasta. So, these are mezzi rigatoni. Mezzi means half. So here's a regular rigatoni. Sorry. Here's a regular rigatono. Here is a 
Are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah, this is rigatoni. Oh, oh, together is a rigatoni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And then they cut it and they made it Metsy rigatoni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Uh, now look, there's some numbers here. It says 14 minutes, al dente 12. I'm very, very far left on this. I say 10. And then do the last two minutes in the sauce. That's what I say. So we'll go in. And we want to crank it up immediately and give it a stir immediately. This is what prevents the pasta from sticking to itself. Not oil in the water, it's a waste of oil, and it clogs the pores of the pasta, which we don't want to do because we want the pores of the pasta to absorb the sauce. So you need abundant water that's boiling, rolling, some movement. Okay, look, we're boiling. Stove recovered pretty quickly. Great. And I'm gonna put my phone and I'm gonna say, Two minutes earlier because the final Set two minutes will be done for... in the pasta sauce, David. Yeah. Set a timer for nine minutes and 30 seconds. And we're going for al dente. Yes, it finishes in the sauce. Yes. Here's the thing. You always want to set the timer, if they give you two times, even earlier than the first time. And you can try it and keep going, but know where it's at. I'm going to stand out of the fog. Um, just know where it's at. If it's not done and you set the timer too early, guess what? You can keep cooking it. The biggest mistake would be to listen to me, not taste a pasta, and dump it. I don't know what altitude you're at, which changes the boiling temperature of water. I don't know what brand of pasta you're using. I don't know how quickly your boiling water recovers. You've got to use your intuition. But I'm a fan of doing it under. So, you'll notice that we've put no salt in here other than, other than when the, uh, the garlic was cooking in the oil. The pasta water is quite, quite flavored, so that the pasta tastes like something. And remember, when you saw that giant mound of salt, that's not going in my body. That's just flavoring the water, 90% of which is going to go down the drain. I guess it's probably the most wasteful thing I do in my life, is the amount of salt that goes down the drain. What can I say? Starting to crisp up. Are you going to use that shovel strainer to get the pasta over to the sauce? Yeah. I am. We're going to, uh... That's going to keep going. It's not quite ready yet. So now we're just chilling, basically. Can we have some of that bone, bro? <laughs> One, two, three, four. We had a fifth. He just dumped us. Suggestion from the crowd, ever save the pasta water for a stock or something? I don't think I would do it. I, I don't know where, I saw some viral photo on the internet and it was all about like prepping in advance. And it was like, you can boil gallons of water and put them in the fridge for later use. I feel like, I mean, obviously that doesn't work because it's a temperature thing, right? No, I wouldn't do it because all the starch that falls off the pasta is going to be in the water. And maybe that could thicken your stock. Maybe. But it just, I mean, it, to me, a delicious stock is clean and it's made in the moment. And you're losing a little bit of salt, but it's not bad for the planet. It goes back into the ecosystem. It comes back around somehow. Uh, and, you know, a big box of diamond crystals, like two bucks. I go through it in six months. So what's, what's going down the drain is like, I don't know, two pennies maybe? It's, it's pretty insignificant. I don't think there's much use for it other than you know splashing it into here. But we won't need to splash much pasta water today because we've got you know the volume of vodka in here. Look at how liquidy this is, you see? If anything, we need to thicken. So, so I found with this dish, you know, a lot of pastas, I'll dump some of the pasta water in there to help meld it together. But with this one, I found, I, I haven't used it yet. My thickener is, it's the cheese. It's all about the cheese, man. So, uh... Possibly that would contribute too much salt to the stock, someone says. Yes. Oh, that's, you know what? Whoever just said that, you're really, really smart. The, like, when you're making a stock, you never salt it at the beginning because the water starts reducing down, right? Evaporating away, and the salt doesn't. So if something tastes great when the stock's here, and then you start cooking it down, it's now twice as salty. 
So if you were to put this into a stock when making it, you'd completely limit the ability that you have to reduce the stock down to a gloss or, or something. You can't. You'd have to have it in full liquid form. Frank, you're the right. reason Nicholas Salamone cooks. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Also, you cook because it helps you eat. Congrats to you. <laughs> you're taking it back into control. Uh, yes, it's pre-shredded Parmesan because he's using a lot of it. So I said that it's not Parm, it's Peck. I mean, sorry, Peck. Okay, so here's where we're at. They said Parm. Yeah, I, blame, yeah. I blame them. <laughs> okay, so look, I'm just going to flip this over. You can see they have shrunken size. They are not quite crispy yet. Those are pants. Huh? They look like pant legs. Oh, yeah. A little pantaloni. Pantaloni roti. Pantaloni roti. <laughs> All right, so we'll flip it over. We are at... 445 on the very early pasta. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Thought I saw you say the cheese. <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm guilty, world. It was me. It's pre-shredded. <laughs> oh no, we're using pre-shredded cheese. But but I listen, I'm I i am a huge advocate of buying the, the cheese in block form. But right now I'm standing over a hot pasta. I'm gonna use a lot of cheese and grating for like 10 minutes. I played two hours of tennis today and I whooped my brother's butt yesterday for an hour and a half in tennis. Ooh. I don't have the arm strength right now. You see what I'm saying? Low so blow. I got the pre-graded. Low blow. I didn't really whoop his ass. I did beat him in straight sets though. Oh man, I've upset the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Luke. I'm doing a lot of wrong lately. Don't stop doing wrong by no, your fans. No. You're doing great. I'm just gonna. What happened? Do we have any questions while we're waiting here? Look, I'm stirring once again to make sure there's no stickage. You can see none of the pasta are sticking to each other. Right? And it's boiling. It's not like insane boiling, but it's boiling. Are so... there angles you guys like more? Is, is, do you like this overhead thing? Is this useful in any way, guys? If you had the ingredients, and does anybody have the ingredients and cooking along? Is anybody doing that right now? Can I get a yes? Do you have a go-to for anchovies? Like brand? Overhead I, is good, okay. I don't really have a, a go-to anchovy brand, but I'm a huge fan of them in olive oil if I'm gonna be cooking with them. Um, the ones in vinegar, those are the ones I like to eat straight. And the salt-packed ones, it's a little too much for me. So we're literally just waiting. Does this meal apply to struggle meals prices? You know, we've done a lot of struggle meals, and I can't remember which one it is, but that's where I got the, uh, the baked prosciutto from. It was, I think it was in a pasta dish. That packet of prosciutto was $7, and there were eight pieces, so you're looking at, quick math, 85-ish cents per piece. So, is this about a $2 plate per person? I think it probably is close. Look, I'm, I'm in New York, so the prices are not the cheapest in the world, but I believe this is about $2, so 50 cents per person. The prosciutto is your splurge, 85. Here, here's the expense. This is, this is probably like $8. But you always advocate for block cheese, and if you put that a little extra work in. I know. I'm lazy. I'm also probably only going to use like half to three quarters of it. This dish can apply to struggle meals. I'd strike the vodka. Cover on the pasta boil faster? I'd re no, if you put a cover on pasta that is boiling, the, all the starch that's come off the pasta will start coming out of the pasta and it will overflow. Would you like to see a demonstration? It happens immediately. Yeah, we want to no, see I'm it. Show you. It show usually you. boils over when I try to cook it covered. That's what someone just said. Oh, yeah, don't do it. Okay, so you know. I believe that's the same person who said, don't use the salty stock water. You can, um, you can put a top on before you put the pasta in to get the water to boiling temp, but not when it's boiling. Actually, it was funny, I had like a flashback. I remember in college, I was at somebody's house, there was like a bunch of people, and this, this girl was being so prissy and horrible, and she was like cooking, and I like offered to help, and she said like the nastiest thing to me. And then she started cooking pasta, and put the cover on it, and I kept my mouth shut. But then she said, bah, 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 and she made another comment to me, and I'm like, yeah, but you put the top on the pasta water, and it's gonna overflow. And at that moment, it just started spraying everywhere, and it was like, I felt like such a dick, but also just so righteous at the same time. <laughs> uh, Frankie, how about a couple other pasta suggestions for substitutes for Metsi? Absolutely, uh, penne, okay? 
penne spaghetti. We are at 35 seconds until we're at 10 minutes. DiCecco said 12 for al dente. Come look. I'm just gonna give you a cross section here, okay? So there's a tick through, and look, mm. it's almost all the way there. Mm. I'm gonna pull it. Yeah, this one. No, there's a, there's a bit. And so the Italians call that the salt. If you're cooking spaghetti, you call it the salt, right? So that's edible. It is molto al dente. That is called a pinthas. It's not a dedicated pasta tool, no. otherwise known as tweezers. This is from a fantastic, fantastic restaurant in Barcelona, Spain. Tickets. However, jbprints.com sells these, I think, for like three bucks. I have many of them. I think they're great. Uh, yeah, it's perfect for like testing your pasta. So that was molto al dente, but it's good enough for me because we're going to finish it in the sauce. So here we go. So I'm gonna drain it well. I'm gonna shut this off, and we're gonna come in here. And you can see how liquidy our pasta sauce is. This is part of the reason why we wanna finish the pasta in the sauce, is because the pasta is a sponge. It'll start absorbing the extraneous liquid in the sauce and help thicken a little bit. And then the cheese is our other saving grace. Mm, the smell in here. Mm. Mm. It's hot, man. Mm. Getting super inefficient in this last bit here. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it moving. Jenny Rayflo says it's not a Frankie Salenza video without a pasta cross section. <laughs> Jenny, you've been watching. I appreciate it. Also, there's only so many things that you can say, you know? I have to repeat myself. Okay, Hey, okay. these are the details, are they not? These are the details, man. Okay, so we'll move this here. Here we are on the pasta, check it out. So we're just keeping the sauce at the simmer that it was at. Our pasta is molto al dente. You can see the sauce is way too liquidy, like entirely too much. And that's fine. We will add the cheese once we take it off the heat because we don't want to, it'll melt, but we kind of want to keep it crumbly. All right. Maybe a little shake left here. The density is intense, right? Okay. Oof. Let's see if our prosciutto is ready. Yeah, man, that's exactly where we want to be. Just like I said, a little bit of fat smoke. Mm. Yep. Hot. Okay. I think the other side has less light reflection. It's bouncing away. <laughs> Pump along. We're just gonna try to drain a little bit of fat and get them to be crispy. You can see as it cools, it will become crispy, but you can see already how it's gotten there just by gravity. Okay. Uh, JB Prince. JB Prince is a uh, restaurant supply store in New York City, but they have an unbelievable online shop. They'll ship anywhere in the country. Maybe internationally, I'm not 100% sure. Otherwise, go to tickets in Barcelona and see if they'll sell you some. Okay. Now, let's look at a cross-section now, right? It's been another two minutes. The sauce is still getting heat applied to it, which means that the pasta is still cooking, correct? Yes. Here we go. Check it out. I mean, that's... Still pretty al dente. But it tastes great. I would eat it now. Mmm. Garlic is so good. So, really up to this point, it's an arrabbiata with the addition of vodka. Once we add the cheese, we're taking it in a matrachana direction. 
This is completely, nobody does that. Okay. I'm going to kill the heat. I'm going to come in with our first sprinkling of cheese off the heat. All right. That's probably a quarter cup right there. Mix it around. This is, this is, I'm playing with fire here with, with no apron, right? For sure. Okay. Immediately I get the funk of sheep's milk cheese. Absolutely love it. And you can see now, look, as I pull this through, the sauce has thickened so much from just that single addition of, of cheese. Get in there. Because it just looks incredibly sexual right now. And I absolutely love it. So this, if I don't I know if we're allowed to put this look, on here. Look, if I tilt the spoon, it's not coming out like really like super watery anymore. But I'm going to add more cheese. So here we go. Here's another one. Throw this around, and this is an, this is the step you want to do off the heat. Does a curved pan do anything? Yeah, that's that's how you toss. If this was flat sided, I, I mean, look, I'm struggling a little because this is a pretty steep curve. Look, it's only at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm having such a hard time tossing it. Also, it's like really full, but that's that's how you get it to happen. Mm. Did I get it on me? I didn't. Got Incredible. it on me. I got it on you. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's do this. What do you say? <laughs> that zoom in is someone's new wallpaper. <laughs> Let's zoom in. I think the, the oh sick the X-rated shot. Nice. All right, so we're gonna come around. If you were really pro, you'd have these in an oven. The whoops, you'd have the plates in an oven at 200 degrees, so that they retain the heat. I didn't do that today. Okay. There we go. You want to do this like like divvying out a deck of cards. You know, you want to give everybody a deal. Thank you, Michael. Trying my best. If that was a, a compliment on that camera work, he's doing a great job, in my opinion. Ooh, another way to have the plates warm is to use them straight from the dishwasher. But that means you have to time when you wash the dishes. <laughs> but most of the time in a restaurant, that's the deal. Like, I, I remember when I was working the line at, at Lupa, you refill your plates all the time, and they are ripping hot. You will not get tipsy. The alcohol from the vodka has burned off. The alcohol from the vodka has completely cooked off. I kind of wanted to have a, um, a candle here to show it ignite and burn off, but I was worried about the ceiling because I have not actually flambéed here before and everything's nice and new. Mm. Okay, so here we are. Hey, ragazzi, siamo pronti a mangiare. Check it out. Hold on, we ain't done yet. One little more sprinkling. Come here. A sprinkling in. Boom, 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 boom. Diet starts tomorrow. Oh. These are a little bit clumpy. That's good though. That means they didn't put any anti-caking in it. That means the flavor's gonna be good. Man, oh man. Can never have too much cheese. Does white wine vinegar work instead of vodka? I would not do that. Okay. This is super crispy, you can see it now. Okay? Really crazy. All right? So we do that, we do that. And um, here's what we're gonna do. Is there a fork right here? This would be a good place to keep forks. All right. Before I sign off, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for watching it. You made it this far. I hope you make this dish. Remember, we're calling it pasta New Yorkese, the pasta of New York, because it is a combination of three Italian pasta dishes, breaking the rules of each, and I'm trying to not get in trouble with the Italians. But I still want to be able to do stuff, because if you're not allowed to change any recipes, then food TV shouldn't even exist. We should just close up shop. Everything's been done. So here's my favorite part of this dish. You ready? Here it is. Come, come like 45 degree right here. Ready? Oh. Oh. Whoa. Don't do that to mine. That's it right there. I want to do my own. You will. This is my dish. So that's where we're at. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm coming in. I got this amazing creamy sauce that's creamless. It's cream from the pasta. Cheese from the cheese. Mm.
Mm. So good. Listen to this crunch, get it tight. Ready? Crazy. Are there any last minute questions that I can answer before I sign off here? Anybody at all? And do we have representation from all continents? Call out your countries, do it now. Read them to me. People are definitely thankful. Lots of people saying thank you. England. England. Holland. Holland. Down Under. That's Australia. <laughs> Germany. Austria. Sick. USA. India. Las Vegas. That Las is its Vegas own country. <laughs> it's definitely its own country. Yeah. Thailand. Greece. Thailand. Greece. North Carolina. Portland. Rancho Cucamonga. US. Nine countries so far. That's well, incredible. Wales. Malaysia. Australia. Kansas. New Jersey, Freehold, New Jersey, <laughs> Malaysia again. That's great. Guys, please make this dish. It's so good. Uh, I, I think this is fun. This is fun for me. I think it's incredibly powerful with this small but intense group that I have here on YouTube. Thank you for being a part of it. Texas, Washington. Sorry, I didn't want to leave them out. Michigan. It's all good. <laughs> multiple, multiple U.S. states and at least nine countries watching this live, and it's going to keep living. Uh, it really makes me happy. It makes me want to keep doing it. Before we go, last minute questions. Someone allergic to tomatoes. What do we do? Don't make it with tomatoes. <laughs> first of all, you could go. Okay, so remember, this dish is modeled a little bit after something called amatrichana. Amatrichana was invented after the tomato came from Peru to the Lazio region of Italy. Before that, the dish was called gricha, and it was tomatoless. So it was just pecorino cheese and guanciale, the pork fat. So, so I would do uh, garlic and oil, I'd put the vodka in, I'd cook it down, I'd finish cooking the pasta in the vodka and the, and the oil garlic, I'd add the cheese, and I'd put the crispy prosciutto on top. You can make this a, a Blanco version, why not? I'm signing off. Please make pasta New Yorkese. Thank you so much for watching. Peace in. We have to make sure that we show a empty plate shot. I don't think that'll be a problem, everybody. We can do that. It's, don't worry, it'll be empty. But like, do I have to like eat by myself right here? I want to give it to the other three people. Egypt. Yeah, yeah shout out Egypt. Sick. Nice. Hi Egypt, thanks for watching. Brewster, New York, come on over. Yeah, dude, we're, <laughs> we're just down 684 right now. <laughs> In an undisclosed location. That's it, man, I'm signing off. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks man, I owe you an hour. Put it on the clean one. Oh, how do I end this? <laughs> Peace.